Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today on this lovely, dreary Tuesday morning. Well, it is January and we are talking about our launch of So Confident and our first project. And I always like to show that first when we start our Facebook Lives. So this is the project for January. It's the Now Jacket with lots of changes to it. We've added this wonderful two opening pocket to it. We've added a bottom band, a cuff and a vent and a sleeve patch. And we've changed the collar and made it more of a stand up collar. And it's made in a feather whale corduroy, which is so fine that it feels like velvet. So we still have kits in raspberry, tartan, which is basically forest green and royal blue but we have just added black and I think this is so elegant and beautiful and frankly I can't wait to make a now jacket out of this because I don't know it just seems like I would wear a black feather whale corduroy jacket all the time so that is what's going on in January there's still time to join so confident for the year uh, there's always time to join so confident for the year if you sign up later in the year you get the project starting in January but if you sign up right now you're right in the thick of it we had our first Q&A uh, zoom call last I don't know Friday I think it was and we have another one this Thursday at four o'clock central time so I look forward to seeing you then um, you're also adding something next week on February 1st. I'm doing a live Zoom, kind of a sew along or follow along or definitely uh, engage uh, in a live Zoom call, but I'm doing it on cover stitching. And we're going to be doing a little series of these uh, sort of mini classes where I'm tackling one topic at a time. And next Tuesday's or next Wednesday's topic is cover stitching. Now, Ever since I purchased a cover stitch machine, it, I have to admit it took me, you know, like two or three months to even get it out of the box. And then it took me another couple of months to really wrap my arms around the threading and understanding the difference between regular overlocking and cover stitching. But once I decided to sit down one Saturday afternoon and just get my head into it, I have since really enjoyed using cover stitching. And I use it all the time now when I'm making a knit garment, which is pretty darn often. So I'm going to talk about uh, the setup for the cover stitch. I'm going to talk about how I'm going to experiment and show you, demonstrate on hemming. So I'm going to talk to you about how I prepare my hems, how I mark them so I get them cover stitched just perfectly so that I'm covering the raw edge on the wrong side and I can adjust the width of my cover stitching with two threads or three threads. And I'm going to show you how I do it flat and then how I do it in the round and how I begin and end it neatly. So hopefully you'll join us. It's a $10 class. You can sign up between now and, and uh, Wednesday. It will be recorded. So if you can't join me on the exact time, which is, I believe, noon on the 1st, you can watch it anytime forever. So hope to see you then. Uh, I also have a craftsy class on serging and cover stitching fashion details and it's a really comprehensive class with seven or eight lessons that show you how to use your serger and your cover stitch uh, option for fashion details this is not just basic stuff this is taking it to another level and using those machines for interesting fashionable details that show on garments so check that out on craftsy they're generally having some sort of sale, and I think you can get the class pretty easily. But if you've already bought it and you haven't watched it, well, maybe you should watch it before next Wednesday and then join me again. All right, today we're going to talk about fur, faux fur, actually. Um, you know, fur has been around for a long time. I think it's one of those fabrics that we love and we don't know what to do with it, and we're afraid to tackle it. And so... Again, I have a craftsy class called You Can Sew That, and one of the lessons is all about sewing fur. So check that out as well, but I'm going to give you the 10-minute synopsis today on what is in that lesson in that class. So you don't need to be afraid of it. 
Uh, the only thing about fur is it's kind of messy. You know, you got to have a vacuum around and uh, clean up your sewing room afterwards. But other than that, it's it's very easy to sew. So I'm going to go through a whole routine of what to do, and then I'm going to show you or talk to you about what you really don't need to do. But first, I want to show some examples. And I we have two garments that are made up in fur, either totally or partially. And I'll start with the one I have on. I have on the Charlie Bomber. Now this garment was made by Samantha Plough, and I am crazy about this, thus I'm wearing it. And today I'm going to show all the jackets with skirts or dresses, which is something that we don't do very often. You know, the, the first thought is, oh, okay, I'll just wear this with my black pants. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, but why not, you know, just step it up a little bit and and wear a skirt or a dress and change the profile just a little bit <clears throat> so that you know you look really fashionable. So this one is the <clears throat> excuse me the Charlie Bomber. The front of it is a uh, cotton kind of a poplin type cotton, and it's been backed with a cotton knit. And there are some channel stitches, I think. Yes, <laughs> diagonal. I get, hard to see. Uh, diagonal channel stitches. Uh, this was taken from a previous uh, uh, class that we did, and I'm going to show you that in a second. But first I have to show this off because it's a slight variation of the bomber jacket, Charlie bomber jacket pattern. It has longer cuffs, which I really like. Uh, they're really long, and I, you know, this is the style, of course, to wear them like this, but because I have to work and um, type and write and whatever, and I, I am rolling them up. But the look is to have a very long cuff, and I love exactly where that hits. Samantha did a good job on that. So the front is the quilted cotton, and then the faux fur. This is a, a small, short pile with some laminated pieces of I'm not sure what, uh, but some so sort of a little faux leather little patent leather that's been embossed onto this fur. So the back of it is also the fur, and you can see that the cuffs and the bottom band are ribbing. And I believe this band is higher than the normal bomber. The concept was pretty much taken from this jacket, which we introduced a couple of years ago. So you can see that this has also been quilted. This is a blue cotton, and then there's some uh, slightly contrasting blue knit on the inside. And the two fabrics have been quilted together. One thing I noticed when I put this on today is how cozy and warm it is. I mean, it's really warm. I could wear this as an outer jacket, but it feels great inside today for sure. Uh, but this is more the proportion of the band on the bottom, more like four inches, and this is more like four inches of cuff. So you can see that Samantha's changed the dimensions of those, which I think really adds some drama to this and really put it into very high style. Uh, this was a, a variation to the pattern in that we put denim here, we left the raw edge of the denim, but normally that uh, bomber is You can see here the contrasting ribbing, cuffs. Uh, these are just appliques on here, but normally there's just a shoulder seam that's dropped very much forward, and there's no seam across here as we've done on the denim. So if you buy the Charlie Bomber pattern, this is more what you're going to get, and this is one variation. And so Samantha took that concept and applied it to this one that she's made. Now, another one that she made, I, I tell you, well, I have to show you something else, though. I have to show you how you can wear it with a skirt. So, for instance, this is the 8th Avenue skirt. This is the one that has the diagonal uh, seams, although this piece actually is a, a rectangle. And then the, this uh, bias piece on the side that's inserted between the two seams. It is a fitted skirt. It does have a, a, a zipper on the side and a covered... The, band, the facing actually covers the top and looks like a little binding, but it's not. It's a facing that's been wrapped. But at any rate, that is a great combination to put a bomber jacket with the 8th Avenue skirt. 
This is the longer version of the 8th Avenue. There are two lengths. You could wear the short or the long, but we just happened to put it with the long one. And I think that's pretty sharp. So put the bomber jacket with something kind of graphic, kind of a fun print. So while Samantha was on a roll, she made this one out of a different kind of fur. A fur that's actually on a very loosely woven knitted background that's in white and gray. It's probably in black, actually. So this one also has been underlined in a, an off-white knit, and it's been channel quilted vertically rather than diagonal like this. Um, she's added the pocket from the Stafford jacket left off all the, the uh, by, um, ribbings, sorry, <laughs> no ribbing at the bottom of the sleeve or the cuff. And she was inspired by a garment from Gucci that was a faux fur coat trimmed in red patent leather. And I don't know if you can see the price, but that coat cost $14,000. Now, you know, you're welcome to buy that if you want to. Or you can make a very cool look-alike garment for a lot less money. Take off mm, at least a couple zeros for sure. So I love it how she finds these really, really high-end designer pieces. And, you know, while this, that was no more a bomber jacket, but the idea of adding the red was, I think, what led her to this. So she's used some simple red jersey, cotton jersey, to bind the edge of the pocket, to face the collar and the facing down the front, and then also to insert the red in the seaming. And it's just like a little single layer flange that's been zigzagged on. And I think that just adds a, just a lot of personality to this jacket. So you could wear that with something really fancy if you wanted to. Of course, you can wear it with your jeans, you know, nothing wrong with that. But put that with an oasis skirt in a beautiful hand-dyed velvet or some sort of a print, and you have a beautiful combination. But the slim skirt with the somewhat not exactly A-line, but somewhat flared bomber jacket is a great profile. So then we have another garment that we, I think we've shown it before on Facebook Live, but we also made the Crossroads jacket in a faux fur. So the Crossroads, just to refresh your memory, looks like this. And there are four segments. I brought this one out so you could see the difference in tone. And there's a pocket. The buttonholes are in these seams. The collar is squared on one end and tapered on the other end. So this is what the crossroads look like if you have the pattern. Well, you can make this any length by just leaving off one or part of another one of these sections. And you don't have to have a pocket. You can really streamline this. So that's what we did here, because when you're sewing with fur, you don't necessarily want a ton of details, particularly on a fur like this that has some uh, thickness to the pile. So this is the crossroads, and the collar has been squared off on both sides, so that taper is gone. No buttons, no buttonholes, no segments. And this piece has just simply been lined with some nice bimber lining. So that's the crossroads. So we are crazy about faux furs. And they are really in fashion this year. It seems to have been be kind of a cold year. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I feel like I've been wearing warmer clothes this, this winter than I have in years past. So let's talk about 
dealing with fur, uh, whether you're making the Crossroads jacket or the Charlie Bomber, any garment, this is, these are some of the things you might want to consider. These are, this is a synopsis of what I put out there on the Craftsy class. So first of all, uh, you might want to consider going up one size because of the bulk of this fabric. So for instance, I'm wearing a size large. And normally, I wear a medium in this garment. But I think the large feels right in this fabric because it's quilted, it's a little heavier, has the fur. I like the, the way this fits. But I know that I could make a medium in another fabric. So that's something you just want to consider. It's not necessary, but think about it. So the cutting out of this is probably oh, some of the messiest part of dealing with fur. And it's recommended that you cut with the fur side down so that your pattern is not moving and shifting on top of the pile. Now this depends, of course, on the depth of the pile. You know, cutting out the off-white fur is probably different than cutting out this green fur. But nevertheless, think about the pile on the bottom. And the reason for that is that you can mark some things on the backing. You can trace around your patterns, or you can uh, at least mark the direction of the nap, because the nap is important. You want the fur to always go down, and you want to, re to do that with all the pieces. I'll never forget a faux fur garment that I made years ago, and it turned out really cute. And I realized that I had made it with the fur nap going up. And so when I wore it under something, I couldn't keep the outer garment from shifting. It wouldn't stay put. So it was just a really bizarre thing. So nap down, that's for sure. But you can mark with arrows on the back the direction of the nap of the pile, and then you can trace around your patterns. Uh, you can use your long shears. Uh, you can use a rotary cutter, but sometimes uh, it might be wise to use a, a razor blade or an X-Acto knife. Uh, you never know. You, you want to just pretty much cut into the backing and try to avoid really slicing into the fur. because You want to keep the fur for a time uh, intact as you're cutting. But you want to just slip those scissors through the backing or the knife through the backing. When you're sewing fur together, let's say you're sewing a seam, um, you want to do a, a couple of things. And again, it depends on the depth of the fur and the density of the fur. If it's pretty dense, like the white one, you want to finger comb the hair away from where you're going to sew. Sometimes I've used scotch tape to actually tape it over temporarily away from the stitching line. Uh, you can use a damp cloth to kind of keep it out of the way. Um, and then you want to use lots and lots of pins and or wonder clips. And actually, I think wonder clips are pretty great. Um, one of the things that you might want to have on hand is a little shaver, uh, hair, uh, a shaver. Is that what you call them? Razor? A razor clipper shaver thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't happen to own one because my husband doesn't have a beard. but. Um, but I remember buying one, and I tried to find it the other day, and I couldn't find it. But it's uh, nice to sh actually shave the pile out of the seam allowance. And then you're, you can get that fur out of the way next to the seam allowance a lot easier than trying to separate it and find this middle uh, sewing line. So shaving that is a really good idea. Um, you can even uh, hand baste if you want to beforehand if you're a little bit afraid of what's going on. I actually recommend that. And then you should be able to just sew it uh, in a regular way. You might want to uh, use a leather or a larger needle. Once you've sewn it, you can take something like a knitting needle or a pencil or some little tool and just sort of dig out some of the pile that's been um, caught in the seam. There are even little rakes that you can buy particularly if you're into felting, they sell that little rake that's real cute and it does the same thing. But anything, you could probably use a hairbrush, just something to grab that fur next to the seam and get that out of the seam, dig it out. Um, it's been recommended that you trim the seam to an eighth of an inch and then either zigzag those raw edges together or serge them together, or you can serge them and cut it off at the same time. 
If you're doing a hem, uh, you can simply turn the hem and do a loose whip stitch or catch stitch. A catch stitch is actually hidden on the inside of the hem. I think it depends on whether you're going to line the jacket like we did uh, here with the white one or if you're going to underline it like Samantha did. So having said all of that, Samantha, who's the latest queen of sewing fur, did very little of this. And you can see that the garments turned out just great. So for instance, she used a small needle. She used a 70 needle. She did shave the fur out of the seams. That was one thing she did. She didn't hand base ahead of time. She used her serger. Uh, she top stitched her hem. And all of, all of these rules can be broken. I think the idea is that these are troubleshooting tips for you to consider if you're having trouble. And it may be that you have no trouble whatsoever. So just remember that there's always, uh, there's always a solution once you make a sample or two or three or 10. And you wanna work out all of your issues before you tackle the garment. Maybe even before you cut out. You wanna cut off a little hunk of the fabric, make some samples, try some seams, try some hem finishes and see if you can do it. And if by some chance it just seems overwhelming to you, which I don't think it should, but if it does, don't even bother to cut it out. Uh, make a throw and put it on your sofa. So, all right. Any, do you have any questions? Um, yes. Can you repeat what you have on? Yes, I have on the Charlie Bomber using this faux fur that has the laminated uh, little patent leather bits on it uh, for the sleeves and the back. And the front is a poplin uh, underlined in knit and channel stitched and then ribbing for the sleeves and the bottom. I'm wearing it over the Memphis dress, which is in a French terry. Um, can you estimate how much yardage you need of the green faux fur for the Charlie Bomber? You know, I think if you got, uh, let's see, you would need a uh, back and two sleeves. So I would say uh, about a yard and a half, or yard, a yard and a half ought to do it. Is it a challenge to put a zipper into the fur? Well, that's another situation. By the way, we have great zippers. We have zippers with different colors of teeth and tape, and they're 24 inches, and they're perfect for the Charlie Bomber. Um, it's not necessarily a challenge if you get rid of the fur within the seam allowance, and you do get, uh, try to get that fur out of the way uh, by taping it or wetting it in some way. Um, but I think, and then you use your uh, maybe, uh, uh, craft tape to tape the uh, zipper tape down uh, before you sew it and get that anchored really well. But other than just getting the fur out of the way on one side, I think it's pretty standard insertion. Any specific tips for the green uh, fur? I think this has to be pretty easy to sew, frankly. Um, there is a nap to it. There is a nap that goes one way, definitely down like this. But th I have personally not sewn on this. Samantha has. Um, it looks to me like something you could just literally sew up. I don't think this has any clipping that has to happen. I don't think, I think you could sew it and serge it and just treat it like an interesting fabric. Can we see the inside of the jacket? The one I have on? Yes. Sure. You, uh, well, okay. I mean, is there anything, I guess, different no, about um, it? No, this is the uh, cotton knit underlining. It's been underlined, so you can see the seam finishes. So she's put the two pieces together, the cotton and the knit, and channel stitched them on a diagonal first, and then assembled the jacket so that the... Um, um, so that the seams show. It's not lined, it's underlined. Yeah. And even the back has been underlined in the knit as well. That's why this is so warm. Yeah. And Samantha did say that that fur is very easy to sew. She yeah. treated it just like any other fabric. Yeah, great. We don't have tons of this left. There's quite a bit, but you know, this will be the one that uh, we'll, we'll probably run out of. Um, the ribbing, um, did Samantha use the ribbing by the yard? 
or maybe the ribbing well, that's Well, yeah, going ribbing to... comes a couple of different ways, but traditional ribbing comes in a tube. And so if you want to cut it out single layer, oh, by the way, I didn't say that on the fur. You absolutely want to cut out, <laughs> out on single layer, but at any rate, uh, the ribbing, you want to cut down one side, one fold of, of, of a ribbing that's in a tube and deal with it flat. You had mentioned your cover stitching class. Are you using a Bernina L890 for that? Yes, I will be demonstrating on a Bernina L890. Okay. Yeah. I have owned uh, Baby Locks and Janome's, um, other older Berninas, but the class, I will be using that machine. Okay, I don't see any okay. other questions right now. Um, well, I don't have too much more other than to show you some fabrics and uh, talk about the sale. So, um, I decided since I just love the idea, oh, I didn't show the skirt on this one, I don't think. Let me show that. Sorry, <laughs> Aaron's going back and forth. Um, so since I'm showing skirts and dresses, I put this um, crossroads jacket over a trio t-shirt and a lotus skirt. Okay. <laughs> So the idea of using a print or something interesting for a skirt or a bottom is kind of what I'm talking about today. But um, here's the off-white cream-colored fur. So you can see the thickness. The, the actual density of this fur is probably about 3 eighths of an inch, but it's, it's real dense. So it's just so soft. It's fantastic. And of course, it does definitely have a pile, you know, but that's a pretty easy one to figure out. But I also love it with this corduroy. This is a wide whale corduroy, a very soft, beautiful corduroy. And I could see combining this fur with this corduroy. So you could have a corduroy front, let's say, of a Charlie Bomber, and you could have fur sleeves only. You could make the whole jacket out of the corduroy and have fur sleeves only. Or you could reverse that and have this as the body and corduroy sleeves and whatever. So you can mix that up. You could just use the fur as just trims on a bomber jacket. But I love all of these with this beautiful Ungaro. This is a, a forgotten wool and something. Uh, wool and uh, rayon, viscose. This is one of these exquisite fabrics that uh, we still have a little bit of that I just think would make a magnificent, beautiful, elegant, uh, combination. Now what's interesting is I brought this up to the studio and Aaron said, oh, you brought that to wear with this. I went, well, no, but yeah, that works. So um, I have on um, a Memphis dress, but this is a, a really beautiful color actually with this. It's a little more blue than the one I have on and I think that's totally gorgeous either as an underlining or a dress or a skirt or pants or what or t-shirt or whatever you could wear this with black pants and a lovely t-shirt in this uh, uh, dark forest green and have a very uh, more much more casual look than maybe what I have on but if you want to step it up a little bit and make a skirt or something out of this to go with this that would be fantastic too but again think combinations you don't have to make the whole garment out of fur you can just make pieces and parts out of it you could just have cuffs in fur and collars in fur, that sort of thing. All right, so then those are the two furs on this side, and then this is the fur. You can see this has a definite pattern to it. It has this uh, sort of ecot pattern to it, so there's a lot of texture going on, which is why I think this really works that Samantha did with her channel stitching, because it just adds even that much more texture to it. And that's what holds it together with the underlining. You could underline this in black. You could experiment because this is a little bit sheer. I could actually poke my finger through the backing of this. So if you put a color behind here, you need to just see what that color looks like. Does black bring out more of the black? Do you want to underline it in white, which is what she did? Do you want to underline it in red? I don't know, maybe. But you know, put some things behind there and, and see what happens. But I love the patterning of this. So here again, we have a beautiful caramel uh, corduroy that I think is a nice blend with this 
in combination. I mean, this is so the color of the season. And this year, uh, I think I've told this before, but the, in a couple of travels that I've been on, every window in every store in, in two countries that I've been in, this is the color that you see. And it's, it's just a forever color, really. But for some reason, it's, it's this year's highlight. So put it with a rayon, beautiful, drape bee, something. It could be pants, skirt, dress, whatever. But that's a great combination right there. This could even be your underlining to this. If you don't really want to wear this as a garment, then underline this in this. And that would be really fun. You could pull out the blue and not do something like what Samantha did. You, know, you don't have to put red on it. You could put that blueberry blue on it or underline it in blueberry blue. I think that'd be beautiful. I love the com combination of blues and camels. Now this is like the perfect black fabric for just about anything. It could be part of the jacket. It could be the outer part of a jacket. You can underline it with another black knit and quilt it. Or of course, you can just make um, a garment out of it. it. It's a beautiful, lightweight ponte that is 65% viscose, 30% nylon, and the rest is spandex. And then we have the black corduroy. Now, it's interesting about corduroy because it has a sheen to it. It reads a little bit charcoal, but it really is black. And I think for the most part, it would read as a black jacket. So you could have combinations of corduroy in either color, either the camel or the black, and have some fun with mixing that up. We have a couple more questions. Okay. Um, they wanted to see um, full length, what you have on. Okay. So I'm going to... Okay travel backwards without <laughs> tripping. We need a, a, a stand that has wheels. They probably exist. Uh, yeah. Some tennis so balls. So here's, here's oh, my man. bomber jacket and my Memphis dress. And I have on leggings and socks and boots. <laughs> and then on your sleeves, uh -huh. um, did she add any width on those to make them blouse out like that? Or is that the No, pattern? this is the width of the sleeve, I'm assuming. I, I feel like it is. It doesn't, I think it's just the way that it's attached because this is smaller than this, so this has been drawn in a little bit and it's creating this uh, little bit of a lift. Okay. Some Samantha could probably confirm that, but mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think she did. Um, can you show a close-up of the pocket on the gold jacket? Sure. So this is a patch pocket. So this pocket is cut out and placed and top stitched on top. So there's the pocket. Here's the edge of the pocket. And then the edge of the opening has been bound in knit. So you have one fur pocket and one in off-white knit. Get it up here so you can see it. So there's two layers, but when you put your hand in here, your palm is on fur and the top of your hand is on the knit. But it's top stitched on. So these edges have been turned and stitched down. Okay. And Samantha did confirm that she didn't add any width to the sleeve. Uh, okay, what fabric is the lotus skirt? Is it a wool? Uh, no, the lotus skirt is a rayon, uh, something like this. Um, is there ribbing on the back of your jacket, Linda? And what do you think the measurement is? Oh, I have like, no idea of the measurement. Um, I would suspect that it's the same measurement as the original band of the... Charlie Bomber. It's just taller. And it's maybe double the height, maybe? Um, you know, Samantha sent me great notes. And did I bring them up? Of course not. <laughs> um, so let's see. Double, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Samantha can confirm. I'm sorry I didn't bring up her notes, because she would have said in her notes. 
The thing, the thing I love about Samantha, and I think it's a good lesson for all of us, I have a tendency not to do this, but I so admire what she does, so I'm going to pass it along. She'll make one thing, and then she's off and running in making the two or three or four or five other things, different fabrications, slight variations, inspirations from pictures that she collects off of websites and Pinterest and wherever else she gets her ins uh, inspirations. She lives in the uh, Charleston area and there are some great stores there. There's some wonderful stores there and you can walk in there and get inspired by some of the clothing that's actually in the store. And I know she does that, at least I do when I go see her. So um, maybe I drag her into the store that she never goes into. <laughs> Anyway, I just, but I love the idea that, you know, just one, one and done is not good enough. And she's an experimenter, and, and she'll even add details after the fact. You know, as she's going along, she's making, uh, her mind is working and, and making changes to things. I think that's a really, and she has no fear about it. A lot of us have a lot of fear about sewing. What if we're going to mess it up? Oh, my gosh, this is fabric I spent such and such amount of money on. What if I ruin it? You're not, first of all, you're not going to ruin it. Secondly, it doesn't really matter. It's fabric. So it's not the end of the world. You've learned something, probably. You've learned what you can and cannot do easily, and you know how to tackle something differently later. So, you know, let it, let it go. Um, let's just, um, just let it go. Um, can you use the chateau coat with the, um, the tan fur? Ooh. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Mm -hmm. Now, with that, yes, this would make a gorgeous chateau coat. Underlined or not, I think it would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Kind of depends on how you want to wear it, season and all that. But I would consider uh, binding the edge, like Samantha's done on the pockets, maybe a black binding or a color, whatever, uh, but finishing that edge. Now, this edge does turn, as we've noticed. You know, you can turn it and stitch it. And that's another way to go if you want it just a simple, single fabric. But binding would add a lot to it as well. How much fabric um, would you use if you're just doing the front? I would, I would measure the uh, length that you need of the pattern. And that's probably something in the range of 3 quarters of a yard at the most. But we have a yard minimum, so you're going to order a yard and you'll have plenty. Mm -hmm. And with that pattern, you'd have to make sure you have enough for the, the neck that goes the Yes, that's back, true. The that's back. true. This has a turn back collar um, that does, re this, so the pattern shape does have this extension. So I think a yard would probably do it. I want to go back to something. Um, in the chateau coat pattern, we have this fantastic method of binding the edge. It's a, a binding technique that has a narrow binding on the outside and a wider binding on the inside. And it's a really beautiful binding method for any type of fabric, including fur. And I think it would be especially great using a knit fabric with that technique on this kind of fabric. Okay. No okay. Questions. All right. Um, so on sale today, the Crossroads um, shirt pattern. I guess we call it a shirt, don't we? Even though mm -hmm. we've, we've turned it into jackets many times. <laughs> but the actual pattern is a cross road, uh, a shirt pattern. And the Charlie Bomber. Both of those are download patterns. Uh, we give you some suggestions on where you can have them printed that have turned out to be really good. For a while, one of them wasn't responding too well, but they're back on track and things are working with them. Um, of course, you can print them out on your home printer and you know, at the most, it's going to take you 15 minutes to tape it together. But both of those patterns are on sale. And then we have a Crossroads Compendium, which has three different projects in it, one of which is the fur jacket of how to make it, how to do the pattern work, how to sew the garment. And that's in a complete compendium, we call it, uh, that uh, deals with three different <clears throat> ways to deal with the Crossroads shirt pattern. And then we have a standalone class uh, tutorial called the Bomber Jacket Class, where you learn how to make the denim and poplin uh, garment. But 
if you're not interested in the combo, you know, the class is just great for um, learning how to insert the zipper well, learning how to do this connection here that's kind of a signature connection of a lowered shoulder seam that turns quickly into a neck seam. That a, can be a, a, a challenging detail, and we show you how to do that in the class. So there's lots to learn in the class, even though you might not be interested in the denim and the, and the poplin. We do have two kits available still of this combination, the denim and the poplin. We have two kits left, and they're going to be on sale for the next week. You get the zipper. You get the uh, two fabrics plus the third fabric, which is the underlining and the ribbing. So you get all of it. And all of the fabrics that I have on the wall are for sale, on sale. And we have, I think, three ribbings on sale as well, which I didn't display here. So check those out. Um, it seemed like there was something I was going to say. I have a couple more questions. Okay, if you sure. Are ready for those? Okay. Um, is the fabric paired on the green fur navy or black? What what you have on? Oh, this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So this is navy, and the and it's paired with black. That's a really fun combination. Yeah, I like it. And just to confirm, the pocket on the gold jacket came from the Stafford pattern. I looked at the pattern and didn't see that pocket. Well, I wonder if it's, she says, I, I didn't see the patch pocket. So I wonder if oh, that's the difference. That's the difference. On the Stafford, it's a, a, an inseam pocket. But she's used the shape and that pattern piece to make it a patch pocket. So you're right. There's no patch pocket on the Stafford. But the pocket shape is what you want to use. Is the Charlie class different from the one from So Confident 10 or 11? No, it's the same. We just have it as a standalone class right. as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I hope to see you, uh, of course, next Tuesday. We'll be doing something else. But Wednesday, the following Wednesday, uh, check out the cover stitch class. I hope to see you there. And uh, we'll see you again. <laughs>